The paper that we decided to look at was a research paper done by Bega et al. looking at probiotics driving gut microbiome and triggering emotional brain signatures. Our paper looks at the effect of probiotics in the gut and how they play a role in gut microbial composition, behavior, and cognitive function. The authors hypothesize that manipulation of gut microbiota by probiotic ingestion can influence the brain mechanisms underlying memory processing and decision making in an emotional context. But first, a little background. We all know the saying, you are what you eat, and this paper really brings this to life. It explores the importance of the nutrition that we put in our body and the effect that it can have on our brain through the gut-brain axis. The vagus nerve, which is part of our parasympathetic nervous system, sends signals from the brain to the gut as well as from the gut to the brain. Think back to a time when you were so stressed out that you couldn't eat or a time that you binged on McDonald's and felt terrible after. What we put in our bodies is important. These cells in our gut, specifically our mucosal enterochromaffin cells, are responsible for producing 95% of serotonin, which we know to be our body's happy chemical. Now, looking at probiotics, what are they and what do they do? Probiotics are small microorganisms that we ingest in food and take in supplements with the purpose of improving digestion, preventing diarrhea, gas, and cramping. They are found high in foods such as yogurt, kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut, and pickles. The authors of this paper discussed previous research done that found probiotic manipulation in rodents modify emotional and cognitive behavior, but there aren't enough studies like this in humans. If the results are the same, we can use probiotics, which establish a healthy gut microbiome, to improve mood and cognitive function, especially in those that suffer from mental health. Moving on to the materials and methods used, 45 healthy volunteers between 20 and 40 years of age were recruited and randomly assigned to one of three groups, active intervention, placebo, and no intervention. Uh, the intervention group was given a pro powdered probiotic to consume daily, which, cons which contained nine bacterial strains, while the placebo group was given a powdered starch product that was made to resemble the probiotic in all aspects. Also, both participants and researchers were blind to the assignment of probiotic versus placebo. Participants were matched for age, sex, and BMI so that differences between groups could be attributed to intervention and not individual differences. And uh, very importantly, informed consent was obtained from all participants in adherence with the Declaration of Helsinki, which is the gold standard for uh, ethical human research. All participants were administered four self-report questionnaires designed to assess positive and negative affect, cognitive reactivity, uh, depression severity, and uh, symptoms of path, uh, psychopathology. These were incorporated into daily diaries that participants were instructed to fill over the four-week study period. All participants underwent two fMRI tasks at two time points, baseline and after four weeks. These tasks were validated measures of emotional decision making and emotional recognition memory. And um, as you can see uh, in the image on the right, um, there's a schematic representation of how the tasks uh, were administered. Uh, to analyze gut microbiota composition, stool samples were collected at baseline and after study completion. However, due to financial constraints, samples were not collected from the no intervention group and this potentially reduces its robustness as a negative control. All data collected was analyzed using SPSS, and a p-value of 0.05 was set as the level of significance. The self-report questionnaires were compared at, uh, for behavioral differences at the individual and group levels, and performance on the emotional decision-making and emotional recognition memory tasks were evaluated for accuracy, response time, and whether participants changed their decisions between the two time points. Um, and all the data generated from these tasks was mapped to show differences in neural activity between individuals and also between groups. As shown on the graph, the results after a four-week probiotic administration, that's in green, was compared to a placebo, that's in orange, and no intervention, that's in blue. 
and it was reported that there was an improvement of self-reported measures of positive effect and cognitive reactivity. The behavioral scores changed in that there was a significant difference in an increase for the PANAS, which is positive and negative effect schedule. There was also a significant difference, which was a decrease, for HOP, which is hopelessness, and RAV, which is risk aversion. There was also no difference for ADS, which is a general depression scale, and SCL90, which is a symptoms checklist. There was a less decision change for unpleasant stimuli and a significant difference for RAU, which is response accuracy, for unpleasant stimuli. The results for the emotional decision making was compared from a neutral to a baseline contrast. So there was a significant difference in the precuneus, the mid cingulum, the middle temporal gyrus, the inferior parietal lobule, and the paracentral lobule. There was an enhanced activation in the no intervention group versus the probiotic group. There was a significant increase in brain activity of the left anterior cingulum in the probiotic group versus the no intervention group. There was no significant bold differences in the placebo group and the no intervention group and as well with the placebo group and the probiotic group. The results for the unpleasant versus the baseline contrast was that there was a significant difference in the precuneus, the mid cingulum, and the parohippocampal gyrus in the probiotic group and the placebo group. There was also no significant bold differences in the placebo and no intervention and the probiotic and no intervention. This figure is showing the results from the emotional recognition memory task in which differences in neural activity between the probiotic, PRP group, and the control groups were assessed. When comparing the neural activity for the brain in which a neutral stimulus was applied compared to the baseline, there was shown to be a significant decrease in neural activity in the lingual gyrus, calcarean gyrus, which are both involved in vision and visual processing, as well as the cerebellum, which is responsible for balance and coordination, between the no intervention group, NI, and the PRP group. A significant increase was also seen in bold activity, which measures blood oxygen levels and therefore looks at cellular activity in the placebo, PLP, versus the PRP in the anterior cingulum, and this area is a nerve tract connecting both hemispheres, which allows them to communicate. There was no change in activity for the PLP versus the NI group. When comparing the neural activity for the brain in which an unpleasant stimulus was applied compared to baseline, there was a significant decrease in activity in the lingual gyrus, calcarean gyrus, and anterior cingulum in the PRP versus the NI groups. There was also found to be a significant increase in bold activity in the PLP versus the PRP group. There was no change in activity for the PLP versus the NI groups as well. And finally, no significant correlations between behavioral parameters and signal change were found in fMRI tasks in the NI versus PLP groups. This next figure is showing a microbiome analysis of the NI, PLP, and PRP groups from baseline and four-week stool samples. Figure A on the right is showing an alpha diversity analysis, which is used to explore and visualize similarities and dissimilarities of the microbiome data of different samples, in which no difference in samples from PLP and PRP with respect to microbial diversity and evenness were seen. Administration of probiotics or placebo significantly altered the gut microbial community composition. Figure B on the left, through a redundancy analysis, is showing that there was a trend towards a difference between placebo and probiotic group microbiota composition after four weeks of probiotic administration. Through this microbiome analysis, two operational taxonomic units were found which were associated with the probiotic group. There was no significant shift in microbiome composition that was found, but there were specific features for before and after probiotic administration. What was also found was a significantly lower nicotine and nicotinamide metabolism after probiotic intake. Hi, I'm Erin, and I'm going to be discussing the conclusions and future directions. This was an exploratory study with an open-ended question, simply asking what are the effects of probiotics on behavior, brain function, and gut microbial composition? And based on these results, the authors concluded that multi-strain probiotics were associated with changes in gut microbiome and that both of these had significant impacts on brain function, 
be increased activity in emotional decision making and emotional memory centers in the brain and improved self-reported mood and behavior and there's specific language choices to say associations and impact don't over overly revolutionize these results which is usually a good thing in science because we don't want to overhype results um, unnecessarily so there are some key points to consider before taking this conclusion as true fact. Um, one of them is the lack of generalizability to the greater public. So this study was only on healthy volunteers, and we cannot assume that these results would also apply to individuals with things such as like mental illness, chronic conditions such as diabetes, for example, um, or people taking different kinds of medications that might negatively interact with the probiotic, make its effect negligible. Um, we simply just do not know the effects of probiotics on mood and cognition in these groups based on this study alone. And another factor that should be considered with these results of any study really is the difference between statistical significance and practical significance. Um, I have the conceptual breakdown in the flowchart on the right to illustrate the difference between these two. Um, basically, there were reported statistically significant differences in these neural activities of the brain and, and it's important to ask the question of, were these differences enough to make a meaningful clinical impact in patients? And it's kind of difficult to say, but this issue is balanced out a little bit just by the nature of mood disorders being a very subjective experience and the ability to measure subjective experience as well as objective um, information. So this study did combine and compare the results from subjective reports and objective reports, uh, um, which removes some of the ambiguity of this issue. Um, if there's a combination of people reporting significant changes in their mood accompanied by significant changes in objective brain activity, there's likely some form of practical significance to these results. In terms of making comparisons to other literature, the authors mentioned this study in their discussion to support their results. Um, this was a four-week randomized control trial in healthy volunteers receiving a multi-strain probiotic with similar bacterial species that showed a significant reduction in self-reported negative thoughts. So this study was published in 2019 after, after the one that we are presenting, um, and it shows consistent results as well somewhat, where the RCT of a multi-strain probiotic showed significant reduction of depression-like moods um, within the probiotic group. However, there were no differences seen between the placebo group and the treatment group, and the authors didn't really have a solid explanation for this finding, even though it is pretty interesting, um, other than the fact that the population as a whole did not have clinically relevant depression scores to begin with. The authors recommend that future studies should focus on elucidating a mechanism for which probiotics affect brain metabolism, and that this would further solidify the evidence supporting the use of probiotics for improving mood in a clinical setting. Um, other studies have proposed mechanisms where probiotics may alter mood and cognitive functioning by things like decreasing the levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines or maintaining glycemic control that impacts energy status of neurons. So it would be interesting to explore these avenues even further. Uh, the authors also acknowledged the uh, knowledge gap in non-healthy individuals where the effects of probiotics should be studied in those with mental illness to see if probiotics can be used as an adjunctive or alternate treatment of depression and mood disorders. Now, I suggest that studies should also be conducted in individuals of varying age, such as children, teenagers, adults, and the elderly, and potentially those with secondary health concerns, such as diabetes, to see if these effects are only seen in one population versus another. And this would help make it clear recommendations on who this potential treatment could benefit the most. Um, these studies are also relatively short, only about a month, so longer studies should really be conducted since mood disorders are usually requiring long-term treatment and care. Um, so research could evaluate this through like the exact same uh, study designs, just longer duration and measuring the difference between the acute effects and the long-term effects. And uh, this would also help us understand if there are any potential side effects to long-term use, although I suspect there probably wouldn't be many because there are many NHPs, uh, natural health products, that is, that exist, that are approved by Health Canada right now, and that, that wouldn't happen if, if there were severe side effects associated with these products. Um, so researchers could also determine if a specific microbiome signature exists in people with mood disorders compared to those without and researchers could do a species analysis, um, you know, between those with mood disorders and those 
who are healthy, and this information might help refine the type of bacterial species that may be associated with these changes in mood, and that could further help refine potentially which probiotic would be the most beneficial to these people um, if one strain is better than another. Um, I would also be curious to see if um, there's a more isn't always better type of philosophy. So this was a nine strain blend, but I'm wondering if that means like is a 10 strain blend even better? A five strain blend is worse? Um, concepts kind of like that. So maybe they could design multiple arm trials to see if there are differences with respect to, to that. Thank you. That's everything.